So I want to talk about one way that we measure distance today, and then we'll talk about a different way on Thursday, I mean Wednesday, and then we'll talk about a completely different way much later in the term. So starting small with parallax. So the concept of parallax can be confusing because it's a bizarre word, uh, but it's actually something that you're probably familiar with. So if you hold something in front of your face, like a finger or something like that, and then you blink one eye closed and then the other, then you'll notice that the object that you hold in front of your face seems like it shifts back and forth, right? And so my example here, if I am looking at a cat in front of a tree and I blink one eye closed and then the other, then the cat appears to shift relative to the background. And that's because each eye is seeing the object, object from a different angle. So the apparent shift is called a parallax shift. And you can measure the parallax shift using an angle, which we call the parallax angle. So how does this apply to measuring distances? Well, uh, we can basically treat the Earth's orbit around the sun as the location of our two different eyes, All right? So during the month of January, we would see a nearby star against a much farther away background of, of fixed stars in one location. But then in July on the other side of our orbit, it would have appeared to shift in the sky, not because the star moved, but because the earth is now viewing that star from a different angle. So nearby stars will appear to shift against a fixed background of much farther away stars. Um, and if you look at the image here, it's basically like a big triangle that we're constructing, right? So that suggests maybe we can use trigonometry to measure the distance to that nearby star. So that's what we do. Um, so let me ask you a conceptual question first before I get into the quantitative part. Uh, if the star is nearby or far away, for which of those stars would the parallax shift be greater? All right. This is something that you can do the experiment for yourself, right? You can put your finger farther or closer from your face and actually notice whether it shifts more or less with distance. And indeed, the nearby star has a greater apparent shift on the sky, greater parallax shift. So we definitely can see we can use parallax shift to measure distance. Um, another question, let's suppose that we could change our viewing angles which we can't do with our eyeballs because they're fixed on our head. Um, but suppose you could observe your nearby star from Mars instead of from Earth. Um, which planet would observe the greater parallax shift for the same given star? All right, even though we can't do the experiment, most of you have chosen B, Mars, and that's exactly right. So uh, if we were able to have a wider, uh, what we call the baseline, of the triangle that we're gonna to construct to measure distance, then we would be able to measure a greater parallax shift. All right, so um, here's what I'm talking about when I say there's a triangle that we use to measure the distance to a star using its parallax shift. So uh, when we create a triangle and try to do things with trigonometry, it's easiest if we construct a right triangle. So for that, we, we have one, um, side of our right triangle as the distance between the sun and the earth. That's one astronomical unit. And then the unknown distance to the star makes up the other side of our triangle. And then there is an angle that we can use to measure the parallax shift of the star. And that angle will be something we can actually measure. So if we were in person, I would have you do a lab where you actually use a protractor um, to measure the distance to something. If you wanna do this on your own, feel free. Um, it's somewhat instructive, but we'll do practice with just the, uh, just the math today. So anyway, if I do a little bit of trigonometry with this, um, I know two quantities. I know this one AU and I can measure the angle. And therefore with two quantities of triangle, you can always calculate a third. So we'll calculate this distance D. And um, trigonometry plus an approximation gives that the distance is equal to one divided by a parallax angle. This angle here is what I mean by parallax angle. I should update the slide to say so. 
And so our D, the distance is given in the unit of parsecs. This is a new distance unit. And then our parallax angle is measured in arc seconds. So what is an arc second? Well, one degree, there's of course 360 degrees in a circle. So one degree contains 60 arc minutes. And then one arc minute contains 60 arc seconds. So there are 3,600 arc seconds in one degree. So as you can imagine, that's a pretty small angle. Um, if you want a um, approximation for what that angle looks like, it's like the skinny edge of a credit card seen from across a football field. So very small. Okay, so thinking about this um, equation for distance in parsecs, um, if I had a parallax angle of two arc seconds, how far away would that star be in parsecs? Okay, the C's have it, half of a parsec away is exactly right. So if we take one divided by two arc seconds, we get 0.5 parsecs. So pretty simple equation to use, handy dandy. Um, and a parsec then is defined as the distance to a star that has a parallax angle of one arc second, because then one divided by one arc second gives us one parsec. So the parsec is again, an earth centric unit because we're assuming this baseline of this triangle of one AU. All right, so the parsec is tied to the AU. We've talked about parallax angles in arc seconds. And as you saw, even for Alpha Centauri, which is the nearest star to Earth, its parallax angle is 0.772 arc seconds. So it's less than one arc second. And that's a very tiny number. It's one credit card, the skinny way as seen from across a football field. So you can imagine it's really difficult to measure these very small parallax angles accurately. And on top of that, um, turbulence in the atmosphere, which is the reason stars appear to twinkle, tends to smear out um, images that are collected by ground-based telescopes. So generally we need space-based telescopes to make the most uh, accurate measurements of parallax angles at high precision. So there are two satellites by the ESA. Hipparchos um, had several large data runs in the early 90s, and it measured out to 0.005 arc seconds, which is distances around 200 parsecs. And Gaia, which is the follow-up launched in 2016, and which is still operating today, can measure out to 10,000 parsecs. Um, both of these, the Hipparchos and the Gaia satellites have databases that are public publicly searchable. And so you can go and find the parallax shifts if they have been measured for lots and lots of different stars. Um, Gaia is uh, an extremely large database. I don't know how many stars are in their catalog. So even with these space-based telescopes, there's a limit to how far they can measure because there's a limit to the precision in that tiny parallax shift that they can measure. And so 10,000 parsecs sounds like a lot, but actually, how big is it? Is this enough to measure between all the different galaxies? So let's do a quick calculation. Um, I'll give you about a minute or two to do this on your own pen and paper style. And when your um, calculation is complete, type it into the chat, but don't hit send until I count down from three. And the question is this, given the distance to the Triangulum Galaxy, is 883,000 parsecs. Um, what is the parallax angle that we would measure from here on Earth? All right, looks good. So if we take one divided by 883,000 parsecs, we get 0.0000011. I guess if you wanted to be real precise, you could throw on a three on the end of there. Arc seconds. So in scientific notation, yeah, that's about 1.1 times 10 to the minus six arc seconds a millionth of an arc second. Um, this is too small for even Gaia, ESA's finest parallax measuring spacecraft uh, to measure. So this method of stellar parallax is really useful for measuring the distance to stars within our Milky Way. And it's even useful for measuring the distance to um, some stars that are outside of the Milky Way in, in kind of the halo that surrounds the galaxy, which we'll talk about next week but it's not very useful for measuring the distance to other galaxies. That parallax shift is just too small. So on Thursday, we're gonna talk about a
different way to measure distances to galaxies. It won't be the last distance measurement we cover, um, but it is the method of Cepheid variable stars. So make sure to do the reading and the pre-lab for Cepheid variables before our next class, and we will get some practice actually looking at data of real Cepheid variable stars.